everyone, my name is Francesca, and today we will be discussing the uh, reading of notes on the second string. So we'll be talking primarily about the B, C, and D on the second string. We will also combine some information that we learned in the last video that I did um, in reading on the first string, and then read some uh, exercises on the first and second string. So to start out, we'll be talking about just the notation and how to play the uh, notes on the second string. So. Uh, first, we start off with B, which is the middle line of the treble staff, and then C, which is played with the first finger on the first fret of the second string, and uh, that is the space above the middle line, so the space above or the space above B, and then the third note is D, which is played with the third finger on the third fret of the second string, and that is the um, line above the C. Uh, so it's the second to the top in terms of where it goes on the staff and as it relates to the lines. So just to play B, C, and D, I'll go B, C, D. And then moving on, we'll be just doing some exercises uh, using those three notes and getting comfortable with them. So exercise two goes as follows. One, two, three, four. Feel free to pause this video if you just want to try out the exercise before I even play it or just as I start doing it. Or if you want to listen to me play it, pause it and then play it on your own afterwards. Or if you want to play along with me, that is all great too. Um, I just want to give you all suggestions as to um, ways that you can learn and digest this material. So exercise three goes one, two, three, four. exercises using the second string. So starting with exercise five, I will count them off. So one, two, three, four. 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 Um, as I'm counting, I recommend that you all count as well, or if you want to just read the rhythms first and maybe clock them as you count without even touching the guitar yet, and then going to the guitar afterwards. Uh, that's a strategy that has helped me in the past when uh, the rhythms are a little bit unfamiliar or a little bit trickier for me. So I'll be moving on to exercise six. So one, two, three, four. that we learned on the first string as well. So we will go C, D, E, F, and G using the first two strings. And uh, we will see this in exercise nine. So I will go ahead and play it. So one, two, three, four. And then using the 
those same notes, uh, I will move on to exercise 10, again, also just in quarter notes. So one, two, three, four. And then going on to exercise 11, I will be doing the same thing. So one, two, three, four. For exercise 11, the fingering can be a little bit tricky, but to go between the C and the F, I use a um, my first string for this or my first finger for the C and then my second finger for the F and then just tuck my second string and then going from the G to the D um, I use a three for the G and then a two for the D whereas normally we would use a three for the D but because our three is being used in the note right before I uh, substitute the two in so that the notes can connect so three two. Um, and that is something special just about that exercise and is something that you can apply to the other exercises or pieces that you may be working on. Uh, moving on to exercise 12, uh, we will be talking about rhythmic exercises using the first two strings. So I will count these out. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, And then I will do the same thing for exercise 13. So one, two, three, four. 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 Again, it is super helpful to count as you play if you can, and if not, feel free to count along with me and uh, work on the rhythm separately and then combine playing and counting together. So uh, the last exercise that we will be doing um, is exercise 14, and we will again incorporate rhythm and the notes that we've learned on the first two strings. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Fantastic. So those are all of the exercises that I've gone through today and um, feel free to watch this video again, go back to specific exercises that might have tripped you up, play them a little bit slower, play them with a metronome, um, just really trying to get a grasp of the material. And I hope you learned a little bit more about playing on playing notes on the second string and also how to read the notation on the second string and then relating that back to the first string as well. Hope you have a good day. Let's talk about chord diagrams, or sometimes as they're known, chord charts. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this lesson, we need to just review a couple quick things. So that way we're all on the same page. So looking at my guitar here, these guys right here are called the strings, right? We have six of them. We have our E, A, D, G, B, and E. Right. E, A, D, G, B, and E. Eddie ate dynamite, goodbye Eddie. Right? That's how we remember how to know our strings. We have these metal bars right here that we call the frets. Right? You can see we have a whole bunch of them and they go all the way up. Right? Go from low to high. And we also have this guy right here which is called the nut. All right? So remember uh, this top part of the uh, neck here, uh, where the fretboard meets the headstock, we call this the nut. And as a quick reminder about our left hand fingers, this is our first finger, my index finger, right? My second finger, my third finger, and finally my pinky is my fourth finger, right? So one, two, three, and four. 
Okay, so that'll be important for us taking a look at these chord diagrams. So, as you can see right here, this is what a blank chord diagram looks like. Now, it's important to recognize what it symbolizes. So, as you can see, there are six vertical lines, and those would be the strings right here, right? And you see those horizontal lines. Those are the frets. And on this chord diagram, the ones I'll be showing you, you can see there's a, like a thicker one, right, at the very top, and that one is our nut. So, as you can see here, we have, would have our first fret, our second fret, and our third fret. And you can see those on that chord diagram there. So, that is how these reflect onto our guitars. Now remember, we don't play our guitars vertically like this. We play them down here, or if you are playing with a footstool or a guitar support, they are you know, up here like this. So it's just important to remember what you're looking at. Now let's take a look at an example of a chord. We're going to take a look at that G chord that we did from a previous lesson. So, as you can see here, the G chord has all kinds of different symbols on it. So if you remember, we used our third finger on the third fret of our first string, right, our high E string. So you can see there, there is a three in a circle, right? So that tells us that is where we stick our third finger. So if I was looking at that chart, I would look there and Voila, there you go. It tells me exactly where I need to place my left hand fingers. Now, if you notice above the nut on the chord diagram, you will see there are some symbols, right? There's some X's and some O's. Now, if you remember how I played that G chord, I'll play it again so you can remember. Right? I only plucked the top three strings. Okay, now if you take a look, I didn't play these ones, and if you notice, they have an X above them, right? So when we see an X on a chord diagram, that tells us that we do not play those strings. Those strings are not needed for the chord, all right? Now, you can see above our G string and our B string, there are little circles, right? So that signifies can either be a circle or a, an O, right? And that would mean an open string. So when I am looking at the chord chart, I get information about my left hand, right? It tells me where I need to put my fingers, but it also tells me what strings I need to pluck or strum with my right hand, right? So we get information about both our left and our right hand with these chord diagrams. So taking a look at this G, Again, I'm going to take my third finger and I'm going to put it on the third fret of the high E string. You can see it, right? It's highlighted there. And now I'm going to take my index, middle, and ring finger. I'm going to place them on the strings that indicate that they should be played. Now, if you notice, the high E string doesn't have a circle on it, right? It doesn't have a little uh, uh, zero up the top above the nut, but I have a three on that string. So whenever we have a finger on a string like that, we're going to play it, right? So the uh, circles above the nut, those tell us when to play open strings, right? So if you have a finger on a fret in a chord, you're definitely going to be uh, plucking or strumming on that string. But if you have that open, you'll be including that as well, right? So that gives me my G. And I could also, you know, if I wanted to strum it like this, I could do it like that as well, right? So plucking is going to give you some more accuracy, right? Because I don't have to worry about hitting these low strings, right? If I'm strumming, I have to be very cautious to make sure that I don't, you know, strum all the low strings. You can hear when I do that, it doesn't sound as uh, clear as this chord, right? Well, I'll do that again so you can hear the difference, right? That's me hitting everything. And now I'm going to do exactly what this chord diagram tells me. Right? Sounds much, much better when we follow the directions, right? So 
this chord diagram here is essentially like a like a map or a how-to of how to make these chords, right? It tells us the location of our left hand, and it tells us what strings we need to uh, pluck or strum with our right hand. And there you go. Hey everybody, John Story here again, guitar player, guitar teacher out in Los Angeles, California. And just to pick up where Ryan Ayers left off with the strumming patterns, let's go over a few of these basic techniques that we learned in that video. We learned that strumming involves having a clock in the right hand, and we want to strum a little above the strings and a little below the strings. And when we're strumming, we want to keep a real steady beat when we feel our hand going down, that's us really thinking about where the strong beats are in the music. Like if I were to feel one, two, three, four is our beats, all of those numbers are matching when my hand is going down. Now when we're strumming on a guitar, acoustic guitar, or electric guitar, doesn't really matter, either our hand is scraping across the strings or it's going over the strings and not hitting the strings. And I think a lot of non-guitar players don't realize this, but our instrument, there's a lot of kind of magic when it comes to playing our guitar. Sometimes when we're playing, it's actually about us sort of moving over the strings and not making a sound with the guitar, compared to sometimes we want to be strumming and digging into the strings on the guitar. So there's kind of these things called ghost strums, which I like that Ryan brought that up. It's like we're strumming, but it's not making a sound like this right here, just totally ghost strumming, compared to if I'm holding down my favorite E chord here. Those are all regular strums. So if we combine strumming and ghost strumming, it would sound like this. So sometimes I'm hitting the string, other times I'm not hitting the string. This syncopation of the beat allows for the listener and the other musicians to have a really clear division of those strong pulses that we're hearing. So I could strum kind of randomly the ghost strums and the regular strums and say one, two, three, four, all those strong beats while I'm doing it. And it's going to be an interesting strumming pattern. It's going to feel like the music is really moving in the right direction. A one, two, three. So if you're a beginner guitar player, you might wonder, well, when do I strum and do I go up and then hit the strings or down? So I like what Ryan had laid out for us, a couple strumming patterns like one, two, and three, and four, one, two, and three, and four. So let's review that pattern again here. Again, the strumming is going kind of above the string, kind of below the string, and I'm using my favorite medium Fender guitar pick right here. Uh, I'm keeping it nice and loose. It's almost like that feeling in the right hand of trying to wash your hands and you don't got a towel, so you just gotta kinda air dry your hands a little bit, right? It's that feeling of getting the hand nice and loose. So let's get our hand nice and loose, and let's just play our down strums first. And we're gonna do a down strum on beat one, beat two, beat three, and beat four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. Great, let's try that again. One, two, strong beats go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Great. How about we add some upstrokes in there or the and of one and the and of two, the and of three, the and of four. Maybe we'll go one, two and three, four and, like this. One, two and three, four and. One, two and three, four and. Listen again. One, two and three, four and. One, two and three, four and. Great, let's try that again and let's do it a little slower for those of us who are just beginning with this. One, two and three, four and. So see where the ghost strums are? It's coming back up to hit the strong beats. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. 
like how Ryan described it is it's just a ghost strum. We're bringing our hand back up, and when the hand comes back up from down here to up here, we want to avoid strumming the strings. So let's play that pattern a couple more times. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, here we go. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. The pattern that Ryan played was one, And I like that one because we hear that a lot in popular music. So maybe we should try a couple different chords when we're doing these strumming patterns. We're on E, let's try the G chord. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three. Great, so we're gonna practice the one, two, and three, and four, and also one, two, and three. Four and four. If we practice both of those patterns and we practice our downstrokes and our upstrokes, we can kind of combine these syncopations to come up with our own strumming patterns so long as we're staying on our beats. That's going to give us that really cool, creative sort of strumming pattern and the looseness that we want to have when we're playing any of our favorite pop songs. So if you have any other questions, ask your teacher or contact us, us here at GFA. And again, I'm John Story. Glad you were here to practice a little strumming with me today.